Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, today we are starting to uh, talk about uh, pelvic masses. Uh, pelvic masses are common and may involve reproductive organs or non-gynecological structures. Affected women can be symptom-free or may complain of pain, pressure, dysmenorrhea, infertility, or uterine bleeding. Uh, treatment varies with patient age and therapeutic goals. Medical management is possible for many with pelvic masses, but uh, for others, uh, procedural in uh, interventions offer high success rates. Of associated factors, pelvic mass uh, rates and underlying pathology change with age. In prepubertal girls, uh, most gynecologic pelvic masses involve the ovary. Even before puberty, ovaries are active and masses are often functional rather than neoplastic cysts. Of neoplastic lesions, most are benign germ cell tumors, especially major cystic teratomas, dermoid cysts. Uh, malignant ovarian tumors in children and adolescents are rare. And these age group accounts or, uh, for only uh, 1.2% of all ovarian cancers. Uh, most cancers are germ cell tumors, and among children and adolescents, uh, rates increase with age. In adolescents, the incidence and the type of ovarian pathology in general minors uh, that of prepubertal girls. However, with the onset of reproductive function, uh, pelvic masses in adolescents may also include endometriomas uh, and the sequelae of pelvic inflammatory disease and pregnancy. In adult women, the, di uh, the differential diagnosis for a pelvic mass expands. Uh, uterine enlargement due to pregnancy, functional variant cysts, and leiomyoma are among the most, most common. Endometrioma, major cystic teratoma, acute or chronic tubovarian abscess, and ectopic pregnancies are other frequent causes. Most pelvic masses in this group, in this age group, are benign, uh, but malignancy rates increase with age. In postmenopausal women with cessation of reproductive function, the causes of pelvic mass also change. Simple ovarian cysts and leiomyomas are still frequent. Menopause typically results in leiomyoma trophy, but some uterine bulk uh, may still persist. Importantly, malignancy is a more frequent cause in this demographic group. Ovarian cancer accounts uh, for nearly 3% of new cancers among all women. Uterine tumors including adenocarcinoma and sarcoma can enlarge the uterus. So, let's talk about leiomyomas. Uh, uterine enlargement most frequently reflects pregnancy or leiomyomas. Uh, less often, enlargement uh, as from adenomyosis, hematometra, an uh, inherited nexal mass or malignancy. Of these, leiomyomas are benign, smooth muscle neoplasms that typically originate from the myometria. They are often referred to as uterine myomas and they are colloquially called fibroids. Uh, their incidence among women is generally stated as a 20 to 25 percent, but is as high as 70 to 80 percent in studies using histologic or sonographic examination. The health care uh, consequences of these tumors are substantial. Um, from 1998 to 2005, uh, 27% of inpatient gynecologic admissions were for uterine leiomyoma care. 
uh, grossly lyomyomas around rubbery tumors that when uh, dissected display a world pattern. They possess a distinct uh, autonomy from their surrounding myometrium because of thin outer connective tissue layer. This clinically important cleavage plane allow lyomyomas to be easily shelled from the utero during surgery. Histologically, lyomyomas contain uh, elongated smooth muscle cells uh, aggregated in dense bundles. Methodic activity, however, is rare and is a key point uh, in differentiation from malignant lyomyosarcoma. Uh, uh, each lyomyoma is derived from a single progenitor myocyte. Thus, multiple tumors within the same uterus each show independent cytogenetic origins. Following their genesis, uh, uterine lyomyomas are estrogen and progesterone sensitive tumors. Uh, consequently, uh, they develop during the reproductive years. After menopause, lyomyomas generally shrink, and new tumor development is infrequent. These sex steroid hormones uh, likely mediate their effect by stimulating or inhibiting uh, transcription uh, or cellular growth factor production. Lyomyomas themselves create a hyperestrogenic environment, uh, which appeals requisite for their growth and maintenance. First, compared with normal myometrium, lyomyoma cells contain a greater density of estrogen receptors, which results in greater estradiol binding. Uh, secondly, uh, these tumors convert less estradiol to the weaker estrone. Uh, a third mechanism involves higher levels of cytochrome P450 aromatase. Uh, and lyomyomas compared with normal myocytes. This specific enzyme catalyzes the conversation of androgens to estrogens. Some conditions also provide sustained estrogen exposure uh, that encourages lyomyoma formation. <clears throat> For example, uh, the increased years of persistent estrogen production found with early menarche and with an increased body mass index are each linked with the greater lyomyoma risk. Obese women produce more estrogens from increased conversation of an uh, androgens to estrogen in adipose tissue by aromatase. They also display decreased hepatic production of uh, sex hormone binding globally. Women with polycystic ovary syndrome have a higher risk of myoma formation, which may stem from the sustained estrogen exposure that accompanies chronic anovulation. Smoking alters estrogen metabolism and lowers uh, physiologically active uh, serum estrogen levels. Uh, they, uh, these may explain why women who smoke generally have a lower risk for lyomyoma formation. As with estrogen, lyomyomas um, and higher progesterone receptor density uh, compared with their surrounding myometrium. Progesterone is considered the critical mitogen with, uh, for uh, uterine lyomyoma growth and development. Uh, and estrogen functions to upregulate and maintain progesterone receptors. Thus, uh, cell proliferation, extracellular matrix accumulation, and cell hypertrophy, uh, which all lead to lyomyoma growth, are controlled by progesterone directly and uh, in a permissive role by estrogen. This relationship has supported by evidence that the antiprogestins mifeprostone and iliprostal 
acetate induce atrophy and most myomas. Moreover, in women tr uh, treated with hanadotropin releasing hormone agonists, lyomyomas typically decrease in size. However, if progestins are given simultaneously with gonadotropin releasing hormone agents, uh, there is typically increased lyomyoma growth. But given alone, progestins decrease growth. So let's talk about epidemiology. The lifetime risk of fibroids is 70% and Caucasian women. Greater than 80% of African American women will develop lyomyoma by age 50. African American women are more likely to be younger at the time of diagnosis, have larger fibroids and a greater number of fibroids, have a bleeding and more severe anemia. What are the risk factors? Uh, myomas are rare in the adolescents but increase with age during the reproductive years. Uh, the cumulative incidence by age 50 years is nearly 70% in whites and more than 80% in African American women. Lower rates of lyomyomas are linked with pregnancy. Lyomyomas are more common in black women compared with white, Asian, or Hispanic women. Thus, as noted earlier, uh, heredity and specifically gene mutations play a seminal role in myoma development. Uh, of other factors associated with myoma development, non-smoking, early menarche, nulliparity, perimenopause, increased alcohol use, obesity, and hypertension are notably, notable risk. Uh, generally, low-dose oral contraceptive pills are protective against uh, the development of new fibroids but may stimulate existing fibroids. The exception uh, to these may be in women who start oral contraceptive pills between the age of uh, third, uh, 13 and 16. The use of hormone replacement in postmenopausal women with fibroids is associated with fibroid growth, but typically doesn't result in clinical symptoms. Uh, those who have higher parity have had a more recent pregnancy um, and have breastfed all display lower incidences of myoma formation. The risk of fibroids decreases also uh, with oral contraception use and uh, injectable depot medroxyprogesterone acetate use. Uh, uterine lyomyoma classification. These tumors are classified based on their location and direction of growth. Subserosal lyomyomas originate from myocytes adjacent to the uterine serosa and their growth is directed outwards. Here in this picture you can see this type of uh, fibroid here. It is pedunculated form and here intramural with subserosal component here. Uh, when uh, these are attached only by a stalk to their progenitor myometrium, they are called pedunculated lyomyomas, like this, uh, like here in this picture. Uh, parasitic uh, lyomyomas are subserosal variants uh, that attach themselves to nearby pelvic structures from which they uh, derive vascular support. Uh, intramural lyomyomas are those with growth centered within the uterine wall. Uh, finally, submucous lyomyomas are approximate to the endometrium and grow towards and bulge into the endometrial cavity.
Uh, here in this picture you can see these two types of lyomyoma. This is intramural type and this is uh, submucous one. So uh, this is pedunculated type of submucous lyomyoma and this is uh, submucosal lyomyoma with intramural component here. For endoscopic resection evaluation, submucous lyomyomas are further classified by their depth uh, of involvement. Type 0, uh, if the mass is located entirely within the uterine cavity, like here, like you can see here, uh, this type of lyomyoma with only, uh, uh, with only a stock uh, peduncle here, pedunculated uh, type of lyomyoma. Uh, if the mass is located entirely within the uterine cavity. Type 1, uh, if less than 50% uh, is located within the myometrium. And uh, type 2, if greater than 50% of the mass is surrounded by myometrium. So here you can see uh, one type of these three types of submucosal lyomyomas. Here you can see that uh, about 50% is uh, inside the uterine cavity and 50% uh, inside a um, uh, place located intramural. So uh, let's talk about clinical presentation. Most women with lyomyomas are asymptomatic. However, Affected women may complain of bleeding, pain, pressure, or infertility. In general, symptom risk increases with myoma size and number. The most important symptom of this diagnosis is bleeding. Bleeding is common, especially heavy menstrual bleeding and uh, dilated in endometrial venules are uh, implicated. Dysregulation of local vasoactive growth factors uh, is thought to promote this vasodilatation. When uh, engorged venules are disrupted at the time of menstrual sloughing, bleeding from these markedly dilated vessels overwhelms uh, the usual hemostatic mechanisms. For this reason, subserosal. Uh, intramural and submucous uh, tumors all have a propensity to cause heavy menstrual bleeding. The second symptom is pressure and pain. A sufficiently enlarged uterus can cause chronic pressure, urinary frequency, incontinence, or constipation. Rarely, lyomyomas extend laterally to compress a ureter and lead to obstruction and hydronephrosis. Aside from pressure, patient may also know dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, or non-cyclical pelvic pain. Acute pelvic pain is a less frequent complaint, but these most often seen with a, a degenerating or prolapsing lyomyoma. <clears throat> Rare tumor complications include torsion of a subserosal pedunculated lyomyoma, acute urinary retention, uh, or deep vein thromboembolism. With lyomyoma degeneration, tissue necrosis uh, classically causes acute pain, fever, and lycocytosis. Uh, this constellation mimics uh, other acute pelvic pain sources. The sonography is typically performed to help identify a cause and usually a nondescript lyomyoma is found. A computer tomography CT scan may also be obtained, especially if clear interpretation of pelvic anatomy is obscured by multiple large lyomyomas or if appendicitis, nephrolytiasis, diverticulitis uh, or other are considered. 
Treatment of leiomyoma degeneration is non-surgical and includes analgetics and uh, antipyretics as needed. However, broad-spectrum antibiotics are often administrated as differentiation between leiomyoma degeneration and acute endomyometritis uh, can be difficult. In most causes, uh, symptoms improve uh, within 24 to 48 hours. Pain stemming from tumor degeneration classically follows uterine artery embolization and treatment with analgetics usually uh, suffices. Women with prolapse of a tumor from the endometrial cavity with uh, typically node cramping uh, or acute pain as the tumor stretches the endocervical canal uh, to pass through. Associated bleeding or uh, serosanguose discharge is common. Visual inspection is usually diagnostic. However, sonography is often performed to evaluate the size and number of uh, other uterine leiomyomas and exclude other possible sources of pain. Leiomyomas can diminish fertility, but only 1 to 3% of infertility cases are due solely to leiomyomas. Uh, their uh, putative effects include occlusion of tubal ossea uh, and disruption of the normal uterine constructions uh, that propel sperm uh, for ova. Distortion of the endometrial cavity may diminish implantation and sperm transport. Importantly, leiomyomas are associated with endometrial inflammation and vascular changes that may disrupt implantation. Of leiomyomas, subfertility is more closely associated with submucous leiomyomas uh, than with tumors located elsewhere. Improved pregnancy rates following hysteroscopic resection have provided most of the indirect evidence for this link. In contrast, evidence doesn't implicate subserosal tumors. For intramural leiomyomas uh, that uh, don't distort the endometrial cavity, the relationship with subfertility is more uh, tenuous. Several investigators have reported equally good in vitro fertilization success rates in women with and without leiomyomas uh, that didn't destroy the endometrial cavity. Others, however, have reported adverse fertility effects from such intramural leiomyomas. Importantly, the strengths of this evidence must be weighted against the morbidity associated with myomectomy, namely uh, peritubal or intrauterine adhesions can threat, uh, threaten fertility and myometrial defects risk uh, uterine rupture during subsequent pregnancies. Both uterine leiomyoma and spontaneous miscarriage are common. And an association between these has, uh, has not been shown uh, convincingly. Uh, moreover, there is no conclusive evidence that surgical treatment reduces miscarriage rates. Uh, diagnosis. Leiomyomas are often detected by pelvic examination with findings of uterine enlargement, irregular contour or bros. Uh, in reproductive aged women, uterine enlargement prompts the uh, determination of a uterine or serum beta HCG level. Sonography is initially done to define pelvic anatomy. Transvaginal sonography provides uh, superior resolution, but some uh, uterus are so large that um, transabdominal sonography is needed to image the entire corpus. The sonographic appearance of leiomyomas vary from hypo to hyperechoic, uh, depending on the ratio of smooth muscle to connective tissue and whether there is degeneration. Uh, calcification 
uh, and cystic degeneration create the most sonographically uh, distinctive changes. Calcification appear hyperechoic uh, and commonly uh, rim the tumor or uh, randomly scattered throughout the mass. Cystic or mixoid degeneration typically fills the lyomyoma with multiple smooth walled around irregular sized but generally small hypoechoic or unechoic areas. If heavy menstrual bleeding, dysmenorrhea, or infertility accompanies a pelvic mass, then the endometrial cavity is evaluated uh, for submucous lyomyomas, endometrial polyps, congenital anomalies, or synechia. Uh, with a focal lesions um, such as submucous lyomyomas, the endometrium uh, appearance thick or irregular during transvaginal ultrasound uh, and uh, adjunct imaging uh, tools may help clarify anatomy. Uh, of these, saline infusion sonography, SIS, or uh, hysteroscopy may provide additional cavity information. Also, three-dimensional uh, 3D uh, transvaginal sonography and uh, three-dimensional um, saline infusion sonography can be valuable. Lyomyomas have characteristic uh, vascular patterns that can be identified by color and power Doppler techniques. A peripheral uh, circumferential rim of uh, vascularity from which a few vessels arise to penetrate into the center of the tumor is a classic finding. As such, Doppler imaging can be used to help differentiate an extrauterine lyomyoma from another pelvic mass or a submucous lyomyoma from an endometrial polyp. polyp. Uh, for the infertile woman, the endometrial cavity can be evaluated with hysterosalpingography or hysterosalpingo contrast sonography. This offers the ever advantage to also define tubal patency. When imaging is limited by body hab uh, habitus or distorted anatomy, magnetic resonance imaging MRI uh, may be required. Although uh, used less often for myoma evaluation, this tool allows more accurate assessment of the size, number, and location of lyomyomas, which may help identify appropriate candidates for hysterectomy alternatives such as myomectomy or uh, uterine artery embolization. Importantly, MRI can also aid differentiation of an intramural lyomyoma, which is a suitable indication for myomectomy from a focal uh, compact collection of adenomyosis, uh, which is poorly suited for enucleation. So let's talk about management of this disease. Um, first of all, um, about uh, observation. Regardless of their size, asymptomatic lyomyomas usually can be observed and surveilled with an annual pelvic examination. Uh, at times, an axial assessment may be uh, hindered to large by large uterine size or regular contour and adequate uterine and adnexal assessment can both be limited by patient obesity. Uh, in these cases, some may choose to add annual sonographic surveillance. Lyomyomas in general are slow growing, uh, longitudinal, a uh, sonography-based study showed the average diameter growth to be only uh, a half of centimeter per year, uh, although diameter grow, uh, grows greater than three centimeter by year, 
uh, has been observed. Moreover, growth rates of leiomyomas within the same patient will vary widely, and some tumors will even spontaneously regress. Therefore, uh, predicting myoma growth uh, or symptom onset is difficult, and watchful waiting may be the best option for an asymptomatic patient. Uh, sex steroid hormone. Uh, both combined oral contraceptives and progestins have been used to induce endometrial atrophy and to decrease prostaglandin production in women with leiomyomas. Sex steroid contraceptives are a reasonable treatment option for menses related uh, leiomyoma symptoms like heavy menstrual bleeding, for example. Uh, however, because of the unpredictable effects of progestins on leiomyoma growth, it is necessary close monitoring of uh, leiomyoma and uterine size. Uh, Gonadotropin releasing uh, hormone receptor agonists. These compounds uh, are synthetic derivatives of the gonadotropin releasing hormone uh, decapeptide. Uh, they are inactive if taken orally, but intramuscular, subcutaneous, and intranasal preparations are available. Laprolide acetate, or Lupron, the brand name of these, is a, uh, approved for leiomyome treatment and is available in a 3.75 mg monthly dose or 11.25 mg three months dose was given intramuscularly. Adback therapy traditionally includes estrogen combinated with a progestin, and those studies have generally been low dose preparations uh, equivalent to menopausal hormonal replacement therapy. Short term preoperative gonadotropin releasing hormone agonists use offer several advantages. Their use decreases heavy menstrual bleeding and may uh, allow uh, correction of anemia. Decreased uterine um, size as a result of treatment may allow a less complicated or uh, extensive surgical procedure. Non-hormonal options. Tranexamic acid is an uh, antifibrinolytic agent. Studies have not evaluated tranexamic acid spe specifically for myoma-related heavy menstrual bleeding, but subgroup analysis does provide some support for its use for myoma-related bleeding. The benefits of non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs for leiomyoma-related bleeding are less clear, and the few studies have conflicted results. Thus, Although non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs are potentially helpful for myoma-related dysmenorrhea, available data don't support uh, their use as cell agents for leiomyoma-related heavy menstrual bleeding. Because aromatized levels are higher with myomas, aromatized inhibitors for leiomyoma treatment seem logical. However, only a few small studies have evaluated short-term use of the oral non-steroid uh, aromatized inhibitors letrozole and anastrozole. Uh, uterine artery embolization. This is an angiographic interventional procedure that delivers polyvinyl alcohol microspheres or other synthetic particles, emboli, into both uterine arteries. Uterine blood flow is thereby obstructed, producing ischemia and necrosis. Because vessels uh, serving leiomyomas have a large collaborator, these microspheres are uh, preferentially directed to the tumors. Uh, sparing the surrounding myometria. During uh, uterine embolization, an angiographic catheter 
as placed in one femoral artery and advanced under fluoroscopic guidance uh, to sequentially categorize both uterine arteries. Uterine artery embolization as a management option for women with documented uterine leiomyomas who have significant symptoms despite medical management and who might otherwise be considered a candidate for hysterectomy or myomectomy. Embolization is effective for leiomyoma-related symptoms. Several randomized controlled trials have shown high rates of patient certification, satisfaction, sorry, and uh, symptom improvement. Compared with hysterectomy, uterine artery embolization is associated with shorter hospitalization, reduced 24-hour uh, pain scores, and early return to daily activities. Uterine uh, artery embolization also compares favorably with myomectomy for symptom relief. However, some patients do not achieve adequate improvement. Namely, long-term surveillance reveals that approximately 26 to 37 percent uh, of um, uterine artery embolization treated patients will require a subsequent procedures, which in many cases is hysterectomy. So in this picture, you can see another one procedure. This is magnetic resonance guided focused ultrasound. Uh, this is also called magnetic resonance guided high intensity focused ultrasound. With this FDA approved intervention, ultrasound energy is focused to heat and incite coagulative necrosis and selected myomas. Concurrent magnetic resonance imaging enables precise targeting and provides real-time tissue temperature feedback to limit surrounding thermal injury. During sessions lasting two to three hours, a patient lies prone within the MRI unit and the bladder is uh, con continuously drained. Advantageously, uh, MRI-guided focused ultrasound is non-invasive, requires only conscious sedation and is associated with rapid recovery and return to daily activity. Well, let's talk about surgery. Uh, for women with persistent symptoms despite conservative therapy, surgery is necessary for many with myomas. Options include <clears throat> hysterectomy, myomectomy, endometrial ablation, and myolysis. Of those, uh, hysterectomy is uh, the definitive and most common surgery. Hysterectomy is effective for myoma symptoms and a study of uh, 418 women undergoing hysterectomy found satisfaction rates greater than 90%. There were mar marked improvements in pelvic pain, urinary symptoms, fatigue, physiological symptoms, and sexual dysfunction. However, benefits are balanced against the risks of major surgery. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about myomectomy. This uh, uterus preserving surgery uh, excises myomas and is considered for women who desire fertility preservation or who decline hysterectomy. These can be performed hysteroscopically, laparoscopically, or via laparotomy. In general, uh, predominantly uh, intracavitary myomas are resected hysteroscopically, whereas subserosal or intramural myomas require laparotomy or laparoscopy for excision. Hysteroscopic resection is an uh, incisionless day surgery procedure that affords quick recovery. For women with subserosal or 
intramural myomas, uh, surgeons uh, must use a laparotomic or laparoscopic approach to enucleate tumors buried in the muscular uh, uterine walls and then reconstruct normal anatomy. As such, surgical complexity and subsequent risks are increased. This type of myomectomy usually improves pain and bleeding. When selecting a surgical approach for subserosal or submural myomas, several factors are weighed. Laparoscopic myoma resection yields successful outcomes and recurrence rates uh, comparable to those of, for laparotomy. Advantageously, shorter hospital stays and less uh, febrile morbidity, blood loss, adhesion formation, and pain are found with laparoscopic resection compared with laparotomy. However, Limitation to a laparoscopic approach include myoma size, number and location, and laparoscopic surgical scales, uh, especially multi-layer suturing uh, of the myoma beds following enucleation. In general, large intramural and multiple myomas require higher sc uh, scale levels. Hysterectomy. In women, not second pregnancy, risk and benefits aid the decision between myomectomy and hysterectomy. Again, for intracavitarial lesions, hysteroscopic resection is preferred. For intramural or subserosal lesions, open myomectomy compared with open hysterectomy yields similar blood loss intraoperative injuries, and febrile morbidity. Hysterectomy can be performed vaginally, abdominally, or laparoscopically, depending on patient and uterine factors. However, if laparoscopic approaches are examined, one study showed laparoscopic myomectomy resulted in greater blood loss, higher rates of transfusion and conversation to laparotomy, but lower risks of bladder injury compared with laparoscopic hysterectomy. <clears throat> with hysterectomy, removal of the ovaries may or not uh, may or, or may not be desired. Uh, prophylactic salpingectomy to lower ovarian cancer risks is another consideration. So that's all for today and uh, thank you for your attention. Um, and the next time uh, we will talk about uh, another tumors of uh, pelvic organs of female reproductive system. Thank you and goodbye.